Hi, everyone, and welcome back to The Jay Davis Show. I'm super excited to have Jesse Golden here with us today. She is the CEO and founder of The Golden Secrets. Welcome to the show, Jesse. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah, my pleasure. Well, why don't you tell people a little bit about yourself and how you got uh, into the entrepreneurial world? Yeah, it's it's kind of a crazy story because I never had intentions of being a business owner or a skincare owner. Um, but, you know, life kind of has a funny way of putting you into situations. And um, I was making skincare for myself really since high school. And for years, people were like, what's your golden secret? My last name is Golden. So it became this like joke. Yeah. What's your golden secret? You know, and I would I was very protective over these like products that I was making for myself. I was still modeling at the time. I grew up as a model and a dancer. Um, I became a yoga teacher, a holistic health practitioner. So I was like really in a lot of different facets of like health and wellness and beauty. And um, I would say for over a decade, people were just asking me what I was using on my skin. And a friend of mine who I really admire in business said, why don't you bottle that stuff that everyone is asking you about all the time? Yeah. I thought it was the dumbest idea. I thought I, like I said, I got really protective over it. Yeah. Um, and then I sat with it for a moment. And at the time, I had a blog called A Golden Secrets, where I was just sharing anything and everything that had helped me thrive, um, whether it was yoga, or holistic health, or beauty, just my experience being in the industry for so long. And I was just doing it like as, as a passion project. So I had a blog where I had a lot of customers or people going to and I wasn't taking any money. So I already had the traffic. My friend's like, you should just bottle that stuff and put it on the website. And I did. And it took off. And then I kind of had to teach myself how to do everything. <laughs> it was like, like whoa. Now? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's always my favorite part of uh approaching business that way we had a very similar experience with pillow cube and all of a sudden you're like wait we got to build a company like this uh is working i can't believe it so yeah Gee. it's much better than the opposite i think in my opinion of building a massive company and then saying what do people want and by then it's like well you don't have anything that is that that core driving like this is why we're doing what we're doing so i love it I feel like that's like one of the number one questions I see so many of my friends like that have great ideas or great um, products, but they don't have an audience or they don't have like um, they don't have people to share it with. And I'm like, you could have the best product in the world, but if you don't know how to like market it and share it and people don't trust you nowadays, I think trust is such a huge thing. And I think because yeah. I was sharing for free for 15 plus years before I even had a product, people already trusted my opinion and, and, and liked what I was saying. So I think, yeah, I, I think it's a much, for me, especially being in the skincare industry, I see so many celebrities do the opposite where it's like someone just gives them a private label, throws a sticker on it and they're like, okay, now you're a skincare owner. <laughs> yes. They've never even used the product, you know? So yeah. 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 No, it's it's true. We've had, uh, I think we've all seen scenarios where I think Aubrey Plaza just got in trouble for, not to call her out, but uh, just got in trouble because she did that ad and she doesn't drink milk. And it's like, well, oh. that might be a problem if you're promoting uh, something that you vocally are not a user of or a fan of. So it's kind of interesting. The transparency, thank goodness, is... Uh, uh, you know, becoming more prevalent, which I love. Like, I mean, I grew up as a model, so I promoted things for the first half of my life that I didn't believe in. You yeah. didn't have a say back then. You know, it's like, oh, you're shooting for Burger King, you're shooting for Taco Bell. I mean, I shot for every beer campaign, and it's just what you did. You 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 never had your own voice. You were a model, and you were a spokesperson. You couldn't tell your agent like, oh, I don't want to do this. And now, I think that is the beauty of social media: is people can choose who and what they want to promote and, and, you know, share products that they actually use and believe in. Yeah. What's the, the campaign? Maybe you can't say the specific, but what's a campaign you were like, gosh, this is such a stupid product. Or that I'm sure there's, yeah. As a model. Yeah. Well, I did the whole Marlboro campaign for Europe when I was 20, 
I was 30, probably 30 years old around there. And yeah. it's the craziest thing. Cause I was like, oh, I'm not going to like hold a cigarette and promote cigarettes. And they're like, no, it's for Marlboro. Um, they had some kind of like almost like a game where like if you smoked a certain cigarette and enough cigarettes, you would like win this like Marlboro getaway. <laughs> and so we went to this like Marlboro ranch in Montana and got to like ride art like Jeeps and RVs and go canoeing. It ended up being like my favorite job ever. <laughs> but like, which like it, super was, fun. it had nothing to do with Marlboro. It was like all at outdoor activities and like it was like the most amazing um job but like yeah i mean there's no way no matter how much money nowadays that i would promote something like that yeah um but at the time i was a single mom and i was like i gotta do it and it's only europe so no one will see it <laughs> we've all done it we've yeah. all marketed something that we're like i don't know if this is a great idea but uh no that's awesome what, what's been something that you learned from your earlier experiences because i think as an entrepreneur that's one of the things that makes us kind of unique is almost every entrepreneur I've ever met has done a lot of different things. They, they, they've like, Hey, I tried this. I tried this. You were writing a blog for all this time without really thinking of it as a business. And I think often that's where great businesses come from. It's people being like over and over, why aren't you selling this? Like, this is amazing. And so the motivation is so pure because it wasn't, you didn't come into this, like you said, hey, let me just find a crappy product and promote it. It was like, hey, this is something that has truly impacted my life. What are some of those lessons from some of those earlier things that you then carried on that may be surprising or different as you became an entrepreneur? I mean, I've, I, I mean, integrity is like the entire foundation of who I am. And I'm like coincide with my brand, especially with social media now. So like, I think just maintaining that like money has never been like my goal i've always been about sharing things that gen that i genuinely love and use and that have helped me in my life so just maintaining that with adding new products like every single thing i'm i'm ocd i'm realizing i'm ocd <laughs> and um i'm a little crazy about certain things but in a good way like from ingredients yeah. to manufacturing like every single thing has to be done right because to me i am my brand and it's just so important for me to um to maintain that and you know so yeah i i don't know i what your question yeah. was a little tricky but i was trying to try no to... i think that's i think that's great i think that integrity i think that pulls through uh i, I think almost everyone it's people often get stuck in this like don't care about product, but then they, you know, are good at marketing yeah. or they're not good at marketing, but they're really good at product. And I think like you're saying, it's like having both of that, those is so important and making a great product. There's no hack or way around it. Like you can't sell garbage the for truth very long. The truth out eventually. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It just always does. Yeah. Uh, as you formulated that, how, like, how did you get into that? How did it develop over time? I don't know if it's a trade secret. Maybe maybe it's pretty quiet. You keep quiet about what's in it. But how did you learn to do that and develop it over time and create a product? Because I think that's where a lot of people get hung up. Yeah. Well, like I said, I mean, I have been making my own products since high school. It started just with my, I had just had, um, I hated synthetic fragrances and colognes, yeah. like a big thing back then. And I don't know how I got, I think my cousin introduced me to essential oils when I was around 15 and I fell in love with essential oils. That was how it all started. Mm -hmm. And I loved that not only did it smell good, but like you could feel a certain way with certain oils. Certain oils can like bring you calm or um, clarity or um, could help with like skin toning, like all different things. And then yeah. I also noticed when I would wear these essential oils, like people around me would compliment me like, oh, what are you wearing? But I also noticed that like their demeanor would be calm. And I was like, this is magic. And yeah. I kind of became known as the patchouli queen in high school. That was my nickname. I was like such a hippie kid. Um, but it started back then where I just wanted to research everything and um, making trial and error, making products for myself, making skincare products. I 
was diagnosed uh, with rheumatoid arthritis when I was 29. And I already considered myself very health conscious, but I became even more obsessed with my skin is my largest organ. What am I putting on my skin? Like, okay, I've changed my diet. I've done all these things. What else can I do to empower myself? And there's a lot of, th you know, there's no, no regulation for skincare. And there's so many things out there that we're putting on our skin that are getting absorbed that are just, you know, horrible for us, you know, disrupting our hormones to even cancer causing. So I just became obsessed with researching, went into a lot of like ancient formulas, like all my formulas are based on ancient formulas. They've stood the test of time. They've been around forever. Um, so I always say I'm not like reinventing the wheel. I said this the other day and my husband goes, you need to, you need to quote that. He's like, well, <laughs> how did you, he goes, how did you come up with it? And I go, I just took the best 10 organic plant botanicals in the world and I put them in a bottle. Like I, it's not brain surgery, but like, that's literally what I did, <laughs> yeah. well, you know, but, um, I, I just believe in mother nature and organic and natural and when we tune into those two things i think we're able to thrive and be beautiful regardless of your age or anything yeah i love it what do you what's the number one thing people could do to have better skin like if anyone came up to me to you and asked you what do you think is like the most common mistake and easiest fix yeah oil cleansing the beauty industry has like tricked us into believing that like oil is bad for our skin. Um, certain oils definitely could create acne and clog your pores, but oil cleansing is such a beautiful practice. And I've noticed throughout my years of modeling and, and being in the beauty industry, every woman that oil cleansed or even did like olive oil on their skin always had the most beautiful skin. So we're taught to like overwash everything, our face, our hair, our body, and we're just killing the microbiome. We're killing the acid mantle and then the skin overproduces and actually causes issues. So oil cleansing with the right oils balances sebum production. And I, it's one of my favorite things on the planet because I get so many people, especially women that are like, I went from dermatologist to dermatologist. They're using standard conventional things for acne which dries the skin out and creates more issues and steroids and all these kinds of things and then I give them like an oil cleansing I say just do this for 30 days like simplify it let's heal your skin and they're like this is yeah. like this is insane so it's like that's my number one thing <laughs> is oil cleansing that's awesome yeah I remember reading uh and we I think all entrepreneurs were just constantly curious we're always <laughs> i read articles and my wife's like i don't care yeah i'm like no this is so I mean, interesting yeah but it, the article was about how in the 50s and 60s the the beauty industry made us obsessed with the idea of lather mm -hmm. and they, they created all these products that like it was like if your soap and shampoo and conditioner aren't or not conditioner but soap and shampoo aren't lathering a ton yeah then you're not clean you're dirty Right. And like that's such a fascinating like, oh, we've all been tricked into this idea that's like so wrong, uh, but it's so prevalent. Everyone thinks that I need this lather. And every I, I remember in the 90s, like the Neutrogena commercial was always like the bubbles and the orange bottle on the face. And that's just Great what we've marketing. been taught. Yeah. 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 It's crazy. Uh, well, that's a great tip. So, so an oil cleansing, is it just any oil? How would someone do that? So, well, I have a product that I use for oil cleansing, um, but I'm actually making another one right now. I haven't shared this like specifically for oil cleansing. So there's certain oils that you don't want to use that could be, you know, clog your pores and stuff like that. But like you could, if you just have like Jehovah oil or even an olive oil at your home, you know, I would recommend just using something simple like that to start with. And, and you just put oil on your face. Yeah. So on dry skin. So it also removes makeup, sunscreen, dirt, debris, whatever else you have on your face um, on dry skin. And then I sell these um, dark plush washcloths because, you know, us women, we have like makeup or something. We don't want to stain yeah. the Cloth. You just take a warm washcloth and it just gently wipes it off with removes everything again of its natural oils. So 
that's the other thing is like we've been told that like we want that squeaky clean feeling. Yeah. That means we've lost all the natural oils on our skin. And it's really one of the quickest ways to age. Like we want to hold on the, onto those oils, you know, to keep the skin plump and firm. I love it. That's so interesting. Right. Wow. That's that's amazing. Um, for someone who wants to be an entrepreneur, what would be your pitch on why they both should be an entrepreneur and should not be an entrepreneur? Well, I think doesn't matter who it is. Yeah, I think I think there's something that I've noticed with all entrepreneurs is we're a little crazy. <laughs> Very true. Like Very if true. something is like keeping you up at night that you have to birth into the world, like that is a sure sign that you need to do that. Like, yeah. and nothing is going to stop you. I always tell people, people ask me like, well, what should I do? Where do I start? And it's like, if you're supposed to birth something, you're going to be relentless and you're going to yeah. figure it out. And I really think that that's just something that is innate to entrepreneurs. And if you don't have that, that's okay. Like, I'm sure you have something else that lights you up. Um, and then what was the question? Like, what, what, the, the bad? What, how would you, because I think one of my personal feelings and sayings is that oftentimes we oversell entrepreneurship. I don't think most people should be entrepreneurs. I think it's right. actually often oversold and then people get into it. And so even to your, I love that. Like, is there a solution or a problem that you are stressed about? But the thing I notice about people who, in my opinion, should not be entrepreneurs are the people who they're like, no, the thing that makes me want to be an entrepreneur is the idea of being an entrepreneur. And it's like, no, that's not a reason to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. It's there's like, oh, my gosh, there's this problem in the world and I have to fix it. And I, no one else is going to do it or, you know, maybe no one else is going to do it. I have to fix it. And I think that's it can seem like the same thing, but it's very, very different. So. Why do you think often, in your opinion, some people should not be entrepreneurs? Well, it's like trying to, you know, fit into something that's just you're not supposed to fit into. I mean, like I said, yeah. like I started. I had no idea what I was doing, but like I had to do it. And so I just taught myself how to do everything. And I reached out to people that were doing it and I took meetings and I asked people to help me and I had mentors and like I just. I just was doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it. And I think yeah. some people, they have great ideas, but they can't execute it. Like they don't know how to take the steps to execute something. But, you know, the negative side of being an entrepreneur, it's like, you know, I feel like my work never ends. I feel like I'm <laughs> yeah. on call 24 seven and there's always something to do. Like, it's not like, oh, I checked off my list. No, <laughs> yeah. the list is never ending, you know? I always joke with my wife because she's like, oh, how was today? I'm like, I did 20 things and added 25 more things to do tomorrow. So that's and she's like, oh, my gosh, that would stress me out to no end. And I'm like, yeah, that's just doesn't bother me. It's OK that it's always more stuff being added. <laughs> it's yeah, it's always it evolving. It's like you're never. Yeah. yeah. And then in the morning when you go to do those 25 things, something happens where you have to put a fire out that takes most of your day. And then yeah. you know, get to that. <laughs> it's just like, that's just how yes. I live. Love it. Well, and I, I almost boiling down what you said, I think that kind of from the outside, you didn't need external forces to get you to do that. And I think that's what I notice a lot of times with friends who are like, I, I want to do this idea. Should I do it? And I'm like, the fact that you're asking probably is 100%. the answer that you shouldn't because Absolutely. I didn't need anyone to push me to go chase it. I just wanted to. 100%. It's a drive. Sorry, I cut you off. Oh, sorry. No, 100%. Yeah. I think it's just a drive inside of you that, you know, I, I, I noticed that I'm like that and I feel like it's getting worse or better. I don't know if it's good or bad, but like if I set my mind to something, I don't sleep until it's done. Like I am very driven with, with certain things. Yeah. So, yeah. Love it. What uh, What is the biggest challenge you're facing right now that you're working on to overcome? And that can be anything. But I, th I think a lot of times people who are, you know, they're just getting going, they see entrepreneurs who are further down the road and they think they've got it all figured out and everything's perfect and everything's solved. 
But I think it's good to help people recognize that's not the case. We all have challenges. What's a challenge you're going through that you're trying to figure out right now? Yeah. Right now, I'm trying to figure out who could do more of what I do because it's like really hard to explain what I do. (laughs) Um, So just delegating to, you know, my employees and they do great job at like what they're doing. But there's just certain things that I do on a daily basis that I don't know who can do that. And I just want to get to a space where. I could take a two week vacation and only be called if it's an emergency. Like I want, and I'm not there. I'm trying to get to that spot. I haven't taken a vacation in like forever. Um, Cause I'm always somehow attached to my phone or I have to do a little bit of work. And I would love to get to the space where not only someone's doing what I'm doing, but doing it better. You know, it's that is, I think the challenge for all of us. I feel that. Have you read Rocket Fuel? No. That's that's the book I feel like because I I feel like that's something I also struggle with. Uh, but I feel like that book has helped me the most to at least start to like put, wrap my mind around what I should or like how I should approach even that problem. Uh, so, anyways, I, I'm going to check it out. Rocket helpful. Fuel. Rocket Fuel. Yeah. I'll check it out. So. It's super amazing. Um, well, thank you so much for coming and sharing your wisdom. It's been awesome learning from you. I always love meeting people who have been driven by a product that they they created and loved and then said, I just need to get this to the world. Uh, I think that's always how great companies start. Uh, it, it seems to be the running theme. So, I love that. Well, uh, Anything you would ask the viewers to go do, any call to action, obviously go check out uh, your products. Thank you again for sending me some. I'm I'm super excited, actually. My wife stole them, so I haven't gotten to use any of them. So, but uh, I'll steal them back. But yeah, any call to action, anything that people can do to kind of help support and show some love. Well, you can learn more at thegoldensecrets.com, all of our incentives and pledges. Like I always say, we're beauty with purpose. We always go beyond the skin with everything that we're doing. So I'm just so proud to be able to to offer it to everybody. That's awesome. Well, thank you again. Uh, hold on for a minute after we end, and uh, I have a little gift for you. But thanks again for coming on the show. Thank you so much. <laughs>